Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me today in Meeple Station. If you haven't checked out the previous episode, please do, as this episode will not make any sense unless you have seen that. So today we are finishing raiding the enemy or the alien space station. Now, if you remember, these aliens might be our long-lost ancestors and Marimba here uh, just landed our raiding party at the station. So, a clash amidst the stars. Marimba here. Go ahead, Marimba. There weren't, they weren't so surprised this time around, Captain. We got in the same way, no problem. The boarding team reported that all the hostiles they encountered were already armed. They must have ordered general combat readiness after last time. Much more fight this time, but we prevailed. They took significant losses, Captain. Now, they had five... They started with eight, our first raid killed three, and they had five on this raid. Another two steps closer, remember, great work to all of you. Thank you, sir. Some of my meeples here might need a look over from the doctor when we get back, Captain. Bring him home, Marimba. We'll be waiting for you. On our way, Cap. Out. All right, and here is Feather. We got them on the rope, sir. Once we get the raiding team patched up, another good push should win us orbital facility. Win us that orbital facility once and for all. I hope it's worth it, Feather. I guess we'll see, Captain. That we will, Feather. All right, so for some reason, my camera has drifted. Oh, there's our space station. There's the Beauty Tooth One station. Let's go ahead and get the game rolling here. And we got a Hazmeep trying to join us, and we will deny for now. Um, so let's see. The, uh, is it the Albatross? The Albatross is on its way back in a minute and 10 seconds. So then we will patch up our boys and then, then our meeples, I guess we don't know what sex they are, and send them back out to finish raiding the station. Let's go to the map here and see how many people are left. So there was five and now there is two. So yeah, we should, we're killing about three each turn. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good ratio. Hopefully when they get back, no one's hurt too much or dead or anything like that. A uh, big out sh uh, shout out to Christopher N, who's been uh, commenting so on some of the videos. Thank you so much for all your support. Uh, him and I have discussed, and by discussed I mean uh, he asked and I shall uh, do a playthrough of Hydraneer. Now I've only played that game once, uh, once or twice, but I am excited to see and play it and record it for you guys. And hopefully it turns out as good as Meeple Station. Let's go ahead and get our crew out of the ship here. Albatross, and we will let all the guards come out and make sure they get healed up here. Let's just check them all. Stranger's good, Vacuum's good, Halibut's good, Mr. Guard is good, and Swordfish is good. So let's go ahead and assign them to come back into the ship. So that was Swordfish, Mr. Guard, Halibut, Vacuum, and then the stranger. There we go. All right, so all those guys will get back on the ship. Ooh, we've got quite a bit of cargo, so let's go ahead and start offloading that cargo. We don't want to lose that. I didn't even realize we were getting all this cargo on the raids. Um, all right, so let's get all this. Uh, scientists, deny for now. What else do we got? Medical supplies we want, medical plants, biomass. Let's go ahead and offload as much of this as we can. Fish, simple. We'll leave the simple meals on there so they can eat that. Uh, let me check our storage. How are we doing on our storage? Oh, plenty of room on our storage. All right, and then let's go ahead and offload all of this over here. We'll take the silicone. There we go. Titanium, cobalt, raw thorium, glass, aluminum, steel. And we'll leave the meals on there. And then let's launch it one last time and hopefully finish raiding this. And away they go. Lost resources. Did we hit our cap? No, we did hit our cap. Okay. Um, hopefully I didn't lose too much by offloading the ship. Uh, let's go ahead and sell some stuff. Sell off all this biomass. Definitely don't need any of that. And let's go ahead and sell off. Where's the silicone? Oh, a lot of iron ore. We can sell about a thousand iron ore. Or a couple thousand iron ore. So there we go. There's a lot more room. Silicone, we can get rid of a lot of the silicone. There we go, fantastic. Let's check our storage now. Okay, 10,000 out of 14.5, I'm feeling a lot better for that. And now we got almost uh, 52,000 credits, so that is fantastic news. 
Don't forget to like this video if you've been enjoying my playthrough of the Meeple Station campaign. I certainly have. Uh, it's an interesting game. Definitely recommend you check it out on Steam. Certainly not going to be your favorite game ever, but it is interesting enough to kill a couple hours on if you're a fan of builders or space or anything like that. And it looks like Marimba is uh, ready to go. The orbital facility is ours, Captain. Huzzah, huzzah. We've cleared out every inch of the facility now. It's big, sir, and fully secured. That is fantastic news, Marimba. Thank you, sir. The scientist wing or science wing is going to have a field day over here. You should see this place, Cap. I'll bet. Finish up there and come on home. We've got scientists to transport. Yes, sir. We'll see you soon. All right. So they will mosey on back, and we will send some scientists over there to do some exploring. And we're going to deny him. Scout the vacant hostile station with a science crew. Okay, so that is our next objective. And let's see what we can sell to VAS. Um, bum, bum, bum. A couple biomass there we can sell. And I think otherwise we'll hold off on everything. Yeah, we'll hold off on everything. Um, so like I was saying, please don't forget to like the video uh, if you've been enjoying this playthrough of Meeple Station. Comment down below, as always, if you have your own station going, what you like about Meeple Station, what you don't like about it. Um, and on the audio quality, video quality, commentary quality of my videos, because that is how I grow. And then obviously, if you do enjoy all this content, don't forget to subscribe so you get this content on time and in an orderly fashion. All right, so let's go ahead and get our guards off the ship. And then let's go ahead and reassign them job so halibut was a scientist so he'll be heading right back so scientist for halibut vacuum i think was a chef right yep vacuum was a chef so let's assign him chef mr guard was a guard obviously um and we will leave him as a guard swordfish has guard we'll leave him as a guard so that gives us two guards and a stranger was also a refiner so let's go get him back on refiner and then we need to go ahead and get some sciencey folk so halibut and where is our other scientist deny um do 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 oh mr science right there okay so that is our two scientists and they will board the ship and then we will launch them out into space now let's make sure we start reassigning our folks bedrooms here and that one is already assigned assigned available so we will get mr guard a room here to do available and we will assign that to swordfish and then the stranger needs a room that's one thing i wish that you know when they go out on missions and come back that they would stay assigned to these rooms it's a little uh a little time consuming to keep moving them around like that. All right, so everyone is on board. So let's go ahead and send our, send our scientists out here uh, to scout or uh, I guess research that station there. So away they go. Uh, and another, oh, they are rolling away, so we can't actually trade with them. Haven't gotten to use our lasers yet, which we installed in the last episode right there. You can see the bad mamma jamma right there. And I scrolled away. There we go. Uh, we got one on each quarter of the ship on the residential wings. So that's this is our residential area, all of our rooms here. A uh, little medical bay up here. Kind of the main floor with our growing area for all of our, all of our hydroponics. Dining room, kitchen area. Uh, we got some, and as you can see, Mr. Guard just went into the pillbox there to protect our entrances. Uh, kind of the wing going out for the trading ships and let's see what we can sell. We can sell off some biomass Got plenty of fruit and vegetables now. Not a lot of fish. We'll go ahead and buy that fish mm -hmm. and then let's see what else we can sell. Uh, we'll sell a little aluminum and Maybe some more silicone because we got plenty of that and We will leave it at that. All right, fantastic. So yeah, this is the main floor kind of where all the stuff is uh, the living goes on all right, revelations. Captain, the research expedition to the ancient orbital facility has returned. Mr. Science was chosen to speak for the science team 
uh, and is waiting for deep briefing. I figured you'd want to do this one together. Absolutely, Feather. We can go right now. Captain Toothbud, Commanding Officer Feather, strap yourselves in. You won't believe some of what we found out. Where do I even begin? I take it you were able to access the databanks there? Oh, yes, Captain. We'd already figured that out uh, out on the initial mission to the derelict in Savin. Well, I suppose we should start with the planet itself, perhaps. Uh, the stage is yours, Mr. Science. Right. The planet we know as Irmos A-D was known as Kraik in the ancient tongue and is indeed the homeworld of our species, Captain. Oh, that's pretty neat. So we have found our homeworld. Sadly, it was hit by a massive meteor, though, uh, and it seems like it wiped out everyone. All right, go on, Mr. Science. Our ancestors were advanced by our standards. The SI drives made interstellar travel fairly trivial, but interestingly, outside of a few outposts and resource collection facilities, our ancestors never really built any substantial colony on any other world. Why? That is a very good question. Why not expand? Because as we know, a single, spe single planet species uh, is pretty likely to die. Thank you, Halo series. Uh, apparently, our race had a deep spiritual connection to this world. The pre-impact event descriptions of Creek paint it as quite a paradise, especially by the Savin standards. It would seem they simply just never found another place that would serve them better than here. Drive home the true gravity of the tragedy that occurred here for our ancestors losing this place. Do you know what happened? Yes, an object called the 10109P or the Yama Narita Comet was actually commonly known to our ancestors for thousands of years. It passed into the Irmo system every 133 years in an orbit that took it near enough to creek to observe fiery meteor showers caused uh, by it in the upper atmosphere. When it passed through, it was actually the cause of great celebrations throughout the ages as its showers lit up the night skies in quite a particular fashion. Oh, that's, uh, that's nice, a uh, little meteor shower. They knew about it. Oh, yes, for, thou for some thousands of years, Captain. What's worse, their astronomers predicted six full cycles beforehand that its orbit was beginning to take it dangerously close to the creeks, uh, to that of Creek. That's 798 years ahead of time. What did they do? Unfortunately, as much as you'd expect anyone to do about problems that aren't going to happen until 800 years later, not very much. They continued on living their lives. It wasn't until Yarmaniri made its last visit 133 years before the impact event that it would become pressing, apparently, that danger was truly posed. That makes sense. I mean, 800 years away, I wouldn't start doing anything. Uh, how so? Thousands of meteorites lit up large enough to not burn up in the atmosphere, pelted creek for a period of 11 months. The destruction was vast, but not world-ending. Yet, yeah, it left an inescapable psychological imprint of all their society. For the next 133 years, solving this problem was the main focus of the entire planet. It's quite impressive, actually, managed to remain completely focused across almost four generations on figuring it out. No idea was too far-fetched to explore. So, like what? Oh, you name it. Blowing up the comet, deflecting the comet with gigantic thrusters uh, with lasers, moving the entire society underground, many scientific expeditions for a new home world. It goes on and on. Some of the far-fetched ones were ingenious conceptions, but ultimately fruitless. So what happened in the end? Well, Captain, in the end, finding another world that would that could survive on turned out to be incredibly difficult. As planetary candidates' failures piled up, they started slowly moving as much of their entire populace to space as either way they weren't going to be able to stay on Creek uh, and they were running out of time. Why do I feel like that didn't work out? It sure it became abruptly apparent how poorly suited to living in space our ancestors were for any long periods of time. A few years in space and they were already becoming un uniformly unhealthy. Lar large efforts were made towards rapidly adapting meeple physiology to the rigors of space life in space through genetic manipulations. Our orbital facility was the focal point of these efforts. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. This was a genetic research facility? Of sorts. It housed many refugees as well, out of necessity. Our, the facility was run by a prominent scientist named Dr. Wakuya, who kept years of detailed personal logs on one of the data banks here. Prepare yourself for a doozy, Captain. Oh, my. What is it, Mr. Science? Dr. Wakuya considered their work here to be his life's greatest failure. 
the doctor was ordered to start putting his research into practice on the refugee's house in the facility. The doctor protested the ethics and safety of such an act, but the decision was a political one and already made for their research group by the powers that be, all out of fear. Did Dr. Wakuya follow their orders? Dr. Wakuya had no choice. They cut him out of the loop and ordered his juniors to make use of the group's research without the doctor's involvement. The results of the abominable decision are the hostile creatures we've been clashing with for two systems now. Oh, okay. So they're they're like us, but they, um, through genetic manipulation, turned into something else. So we got kind of like a Lord of the Rings elves and orcs thing going on here. I like it. All right. Yes, those things are our genetic cousins. The manipulation was particularly a success. They did indeed become adapted to life in space. They remained healthy long-term in zero-G under constant bombardment by solar radiation. A miracle of science, honestly. They also became incredibly aggressive and lost much of their complex social and mental capacity, the side effect that Dr. Wakuya warned them that they hadn't overcome. The test subjects became known as the dregs to the ancients. I can't believe what I'm hearing. We couldn't either, sir. In the end, these dregs were left behind to their own devices before the impact event. As Yama Narita made its final approach, the vast majority of our ancestors left the system to escape the calamity sure to follow. Amazingly, the dregs survived the event in at least some numbers and seem to have retained enough mental capacity to repurpose what left behind technology they could to seek out an incredibly desperate existence here. Amazing. How did they survive? The records stopped before the impact event, so it's really anyone's guess, Captain. But survive they did. I suppose, to quote an old film, life finds a way. All right, so we got a little Jurassic Park in here, too. Nice reference. What happened to the ancients that left? That I do not have an answer to. I have, however, read the final entry of Dr. Wakuya's personal logs myself. It's an apology for his part in his catastrophic results to whoever whatever beings might lay their eyes upon his words from some unknown future. It was a heartbreaking account, Captain. The doctor intended to conclude the research at their new destination so that this wouldn't be in vain. I must admit, sir, Dr. Wakuya struck me as quite an impressive individual. Sounds like it. Do we know where they went, Mr. Science? We do, Captain. A system the ancients called Sinifu. It isn't even in our own stellar catalog, sir, but it is in theirs. We know where it is, but there's a problem, Captain. What is it? I can't imagine why they would go to a place like Sinifu. It doesn't seem like a particular hospitable place to be. But we know there was something there that was important to their research. You see, the system is inside a nebula. The location of Sinifu specifically in our part, in this part, is in a part of a nebula that thickly shrouds the available starlight. It would seem that seem from what I've read that our solar panels will be far less effective in Sinifu. That's a kind of a big deal. It is, sir. Similarly, the Ancient Ones also had to overcome this challenge. As it turns out, Irmos had quite an abundance of the element thorium. In the end, the Ancients chose it as the simplest available solution to surviving a place with such dim light. Thorium. I've heard talk of thorium power for decades. It is true, sir. There are some very vocal proponents of the thorium. Our industries have been set up to make use of different elements in nuclear reactors for unrelated reasons. So, there hasn't been a whole lot of enthusiasm to very expensively change over any infrastructure. We know how to do it. That we haven't is purely an economic factor. There are actually some quite enticing benefits to thorium in terms of nuclear power and far fewer dangerous downsides compared with many other fissile materials. How difficult would it be to make use of all this here? Well, as I said, we know what to do already. In fact, there are meeples within the science wing who are, were personally involved with Tooth and Scrub's energy research projects earlier in their careers. It would, be, it would merely be a matter of gathering the needed materials Enriching thorium to thorium-232, building the reactor, and hooking it into the power system. Mr. Science, please have the science wing walk engineering through what they'll need to set all this up. Certainly, Captain. 
This is all a lot to take in, Mr. Science. I still haven't really digested it myself, Captain Toothbun. But to think that our ancestors' story didn't end here on Creek and we and may actually still be kicking around somewhere out there is a stirring thought. Truly, Mr. Science. Along send along my thanks to the Science Wing for all your hard work. I will do that, Captain. Thank you. We'll be writing up more detailed accounts of all we have learned in expeditionary reports later, if you're interested. But that's the short of it for now. All right, let's get to work on preparing ourselves for Sinifu. Okay, so that was um, quite a bit. All right, so we got to research and construct the thorium reactor requires super alloy. Well, good news is we already uh, unlocked super alloy. And we'll have to reach the research the thorium actor here. So let's go ahead and get our uh, science team working on that. And we should have two uh, when they get back. Let's see here. They got 49 seconds to get back. Um, so just to kind of review what just happened, we, we know that most of our ancestors escaped. Well, before they escaped, they were doing some genetic manipulation and created the dregs, which have been the aliens we were fighting. And obviously they left them behind. And then they're similar to us, but not quite the same. They're, they're better apt or more apt in surviving in zero G. Um, so they're, they're close, but not quite the same as us. So I'm probably going to have to go back and reread that myself. That was quite a bit to digest there for a, a lot of information there. All right, let's go ahead and find the last open bed here. There we go. And we're going to assign Mr. Science that bed. So now everyone has a bed. That's good. Um, we'll leave Marimba in the ship. Let's, um, so they got to finish re researching the thorium reactor. Let's go to the map. Is there anything we can go explore? We could start raiding like these other stations if we wanted. How many people? Oh, come on. Click on the little, there we go. Ooh, there's 27 crew on that station. That's quite the, quite a lot. Let's click on this. Debris detected. Um... Let's go ahead and send Marimba back out there. Launch and scout that again for us, Marimba. Hopefully he can find some more stuff while he's out and about. Uh, I guess I should have checked to see how much cargo. Yeah, they're, um, it's full up on cargo, so it's not going to be able to bring us anything back, but that's okay. Let's check our storage ourselves. We got uh, 3,000 or so storage available. Um, so let's go ahead and add a little bit more storage while we wait. Aluminum and do, do, do. And let's um, make that too deep. There we go. So the hacksaw uh, will get out there and start building that for us. So that was um, deny. And let's sell some stuff again here. Definitely get rid of all of our biomass. Not that there's a lot. And then I think we'll hold on the rest of that. Um, so that's a lot to unpack. So I think we go ahead and end the episode here. Uh, just to, to review again, uh, not a lot um, of building really happened in this episode. Mainly, mainly story, which is good because the last couple episodes really haven't been story intense. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, plot twist. Yeah, we'll call it a plot twist. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that plot twist. Um, yep, he's going to bring back no supplies. That's okay. Um, so, hey, don't forget to like the, the video. Uh, comment down below on Meeple Station what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Tell me about your station that you're running yourself. And then please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming so you get this great content on time and in an orderly fashion. Again, big shout out to Christopher N. And then thank you so much for stopping by. And we'll see you in the next Meeple Station video.